Okay. Didn't. Hello, and thanks for turning into Living Simply and Fun, and I'm going to uh, show you how I make gravy. Now, I can't very well be in the video and show you, so... First things first is I need enough drippings to make gravy because I like to use the drippings. Some turkeys actually come with a gravy pack. I've had that happen once before, but this one didn't. And actually, this should be just fine. Um, there's that. Now, um... One thing I, I find is an interesting idea when you're making uh, uh, gravy is sometimes a flavor booster is a good idea. And uh, I usually have these around for my lunch. This is uh, Maruchan Ramen Pecant Beef. And uh, I have an idea that I need the plain noodles for anyways. I'm going to try to make a Thai peanut ramen one day. Um, and so I don't need the flavoring pack for that, so I'll save those noodles. Get out my whisk here. As when you're making gravy, a whisk is a great idea to have. I'm going to turn this on to about five. Uh, computer's too close to it, and I don't want it overheating the computer and stuff. Um, but I'm just going to dump this in here. This will give a little spice to it, while at the same time adding extra flavor. Chicken's close enough to turkey, it's not a big deal. Now, a lot of people wonder, how do you thicken it without it being a problem? And uh, I'll show you. I'm going to use this here, which is a little bowl. And uh, I'm going to get out a measuring spoon here. This is uh, for one teaspoon, and uh, I got some flour here off camera, just regular all-purpose flour, and I'm going to take uh, about a tablespoon of flour, which is close to three teaspoons, since you saw me use three teaspoons. And then uh, I'm going to make a paste out of that with almost a quarter cup of water. Actually, say an uh, eighth of a cup of water. Now, take my whisk again and uh, just blend this really, really, really well. This way you don't get any lumps. If you get lumps in here, you can toss it before you end up putting it in. And uh, there you have it. That's pretty lumpless. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in there. And then stir it up real good. Now while I'm doing this, uh, I need to go ahead and make my stuffing. So I'm going to turn this front burner on over here for that. And uh, I need a pan with a lid, which is right here, and uh, a box of stuffing. Seeing that I'm doing the gravy, I might as well show you this too. You need one and a half cups of water. So I use my handy dandy measuring cup. There's one cup of water. And a half cup of water. And uh, while that's heating up, I'll get my bag ready. Actually, I should make sure. Yeah, this is still the same amount. This is cornbread stuffing that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I usually do turkey stuffing, but it's not necessary this time. So the next step is that it needs a quarter cup of butter, I think it is. Uh, yeah, quarter cup. Um, I unfortunately am out of butter, uh, so I'm going to use margarine spread, which is just as good. Um, I'm not a big fan of margarine, but it's cheap. 
And sometimes you got to go with the cheap alternative, and margarine is just fine. <clears throat> I, as you noticed, I just eyeballed the butter, um, which I'm fairly good at eyeballing. Um, if you aren't, go ahead and measure it. And remember to keep stirring your gravy because you don't want, you know, to burn the flour to the bottom of the pan before it's ready. No. Oh, I can turn that off. Now, as soon as the stuffing's set aside, I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, mashed potatoes that I talked to you about. And I'm going to serve that today with, hmm. I'm a little, uh, oh, don't want to drop a can on the computer. Um, we were going to do French, uh, French cut green beans with uh, green bean casserole, but we didn't get the French cut green beans. I, I went to look for them earlier and uh, couldn't find them at the local gas station. Um, but I'm going to do some cranberry sauce, too, as kind of a dessert. Stirring is one of the main things to gravy, and if it doesn't come out thick enough, you can always add more flour. Yes. I'm going to turn this up a bit higher. I just wanted to say, since you're cooking, that we should thank the food bank for this wonderful feast. Yeah, the turkey came from the food bank. I, I'm not proud of using it, but heck, I don't bring in much money a month. So, it comes in handy to me. And the um, stuffing, too. The came. stuffing came from the food bank. The flour actually came from the food bank that's in there. The margarine did not. I bought that. Uh, the mashed potatoes that I'm going to use actually came from the food bank. The cranberry sauce came from the food bank. Um, the... I didn't really say it earlier, but the Vidali onions came from the food bank, too. Uh, that's how I was able to get them so cheap and try to find excuses to use them. Here they are. I'm just going to use instant mashed potato flakes, uh, better known as potato buds or spuds. Uh, they actually work very well. I, uh, to me, it's almost the same as mashed potatoes done the old-fashioned way, which I do make them sometimes. But, heck, when you're busy like this, making things the old-fashioned way sometimes takes enough time that it's hard to get everything done. So this was a good alternative this time. And uh, in case I have to make more, I'm going to put some water in there just because I don't want the flour that's remaining to dry up. Uh, I got it. You don't really have the angle at it. So, as you see, this is coming along. It's not very thick yet. This is very watery. Uh, in fact, I'm looking at this and I'm deciding that it's going to need more flour. So... I'm going to do uh, another two teaspoons of flour. And there it goes to a boil, so i got to be a little quick with this. And it is beginning to thicken, so... Now this time for water, I used maybe a sixteenth of a cup of water, because I don't want to make this too watery. And I don't want it to come out tasting bready, and not like gravy, so... There's a bit more to go in, and that should be more than enough. In fact, adding that, I can see it thicken almost immediately. So, as you've seen, so far this has been about nine minutes of cooking this. In fact, I should have had it higher sooner, but I didn't want it to affect the computer. It's a rather large laptop, and it barely has room where I have it sitting. Let that boil a little bit more. I'll go ahead and use the same stirring thing on the stuffing, because I don't mind if a little gravy gets into the stuffing mix. 
because we prefer gravy on it. Yeah, right? we, we like to put gravy on our stuffing, and it'll blend in with the flavor pretty well. They say don't have the handles out like this. Unfortunately, I actually like the handles out like that. I've never had an accident where I've accidentally knocked it off the stove. And uh, the gravy here is almost ready. Um, still want it to thicken a bit more. So while that's done, this is now boiling. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stuffing mix in there. One thing I don't like about cooking a turkey and all the sides is all the dishes. As you see here, there's already like four dishes plus a, a, a spatula thing and uh, the whisk. And uh, now I'm getting out a spoon. I'm going to have another pan for the mashed potatoes and another spoon as I mix that stuff together. And See, I won't use a whisk on this because if I do, all the stuffing is going to get caught up in the whisk. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off briefly. Stir my stuffing again, uh, gravy again. I don't want this to scorch, so I'm going to move pretty quick here. That's one thing that's hard about all this is trying to keep it from scorching. Now I take the lid for the stuffing here, put it on, and set this off the stove. And I don't know where that went. Oh, there it is. This is what I need for my potatoes. And there you have it. The gravy's done. Now you could add the heart and liver and giblets that I uh, saw in there. You just dice them up. Uh, Rita does not like them in her gravy. She did the first time I did it, but after that she kind of came to a point where she's like, oh, I don't like that in there. So I'm just going to transfer this to another container. It's not horribly thick, but I don't like my gravy too terribly thick anyway. So there you go. That's the gravy, and it is rather thin, but I'm going to put this on the back burner because I have nowhere to put it right now as hot as it is. And uh, again, thank you for turning in and watching, and now you know how to make turkey gravy to go with your turkey.